Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gent Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Creed, not the band, the, uh, the fragrance house, has been one of the biggest, if not the biggest, niche houses for decades and decades. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to dig into when it comes to Creed. But you can check out The Ghost Perfumer, the book by Gabe Oppenheim if you wanna really dig deep into it. But yeah, there's, there's a lot there. Part of their whole aesthetic, their whole brand was from father to son, from generation to generation, so on, so on. And a lot of that turns out to be maybe not quite exactly the way that they had, you know, pitched it and pushed it. But we're not gonna dive into that today. We're gonna talk Creed fragrances, specifically Creed fragrances for men, and the five Creed fragrances that I think everybody should try to seek out at least once. And truth be told, the first three, I knew right away. I was like, this one, this one, this one. And then for the last two, I really went back and forth a lot. And I'll talk about some of that as we go through these, but these are the five that I think everyone should start with. Creed, I feel like, along with probably Parfums de Marley and maybe Mancera, are some of the easiest niche brands to get into. Not because of price, at least when it comes to Creed, they are getting pricier and pricier and pricier, but because they kind of straddle that line between designer and niche in terms of wearability. So they have niche quality, which is just to say higher quality in general, but they're made to be worn and worn a lot. Because there are a lot of niche fragrances out there and brands as well, and I'm not saying this is for better or worse, but different fragrances out there where you smell it, you might be like, that's amazing, just right? But when would I wear it? Mm. Creed fragrances are made to be worn. So if you wanna spoil this for yourself, feel free. I have links in the description to the fragrances that I'm gonna talk about here today. And here are a number of codes you can use to save money at a bunch of different websites. The newest code is GENTS, G-E-N-T-S. That will get you 10% off at bestbrandsperfume.com. They have a bunch of designer fragrances there, but also a ton of clone fragrances. Actually, some clone fragrances that you can't readily find other places. So check them out if you are shopping for anything like that. And then of course there are the other codes as usual as well. All right, first fragrance. This one is the most obvious one, so I'm gonna get it out of the way right off the bat. It is Aventus. Yes, normal Aventus. Not Absolute and not Aventus Cologne. So with this one, I probably don't even need to explain why, but I will do a little bit of explaining anyway. This is the best selling niche fragrance for men in the world. So it's just kind of one of those deals where you probably should get your nose on it. That way, at least you have an idea of what people are talking about when this inevitably comes up. Whether because they're just talking about Aventus or one of the new flankers in the Aventus line, or because they're talking about another fragrance that maybe smells a bit like this one. And there are a lot of fragrances out there that smell kind of like Aventus, whether straight up clone fragrances from like Armoff or any of the other Middle Eastern brands, or designer fragrances like Mont Blanc Explorer or uh, Perry Ellis America that smell like Aventus, or niche fragrances that smell similar to Aventus like Hasavat or bondnumber9.com or Sidraboise. Uh, yeah, you could basically just say that this is one of the most influential men's fragrances that has ever been released, and that is not an exaggeration. So you need to get your nose on it. You need to know what it's about. Inevitably, you will have people who smell this and you know throw their hands up in the air and go, oh, I don't get what all the hype is about. I don't, I don't grumble, grumble, grumble. So you'll have that, you'll have a lot of that. And you'll also have people who smell this and go, oh, I get all the hype, it's amazing. This stuff just blew my mind. I can wear it anywhere. People love it. The quality is great. It's awesome, I love it. You'll have a lot of that, yes. This one has pineapple in the opening. You'll hear about that a lot. Pineapple opening, very fruity, very fresh very inviting, smells great. As it dries down, you have birch that comes out a little bit more and it gives it a smokiness. You'll also have a lot of talk about batch variations with this one. What that means is um, depending on your lot, your batch of Aventus, it may smell a little bit different to somebody else's. Yeah, sometimes it may be more fruity, may not have much smoke. Sometimes it may be very smoky, not too much fruit. Other times it'll be balanced and have a good amount of each. Yes. It's a whole thing. There's a lot of information on Aventus. There's a lot of love on Aventus, a lot of hate on Aventus, but regardless of any of that, you need to know Aventus. 
So that's the first one. What's the second one? It is, of course, green Irish tweed. My personal favorite from the house. I love me a little bit of GIT. I think it's really good. I like it a lot. It's nice. So green Irish tweed, uh, a lot of the fragrance is in the name. A lot of people will describe this as a walk through the Irish countryside. And by that, it's very green, very fresh, brisk, and gentlemanly. It's got lemon verbena in there, has iris, a nice little touch of woodiness, ambergris as it dries down as well. I absolutely love this scent. It's one of my favorite spring fragrances of all time. Like Aventus, there are a bunch of other cheap alternatives to this out there. Aspen by Cody is one of them. You also have, of course, Cool Water by Davidoff, done by the same perfumer. And then you have a multitude of clone fragrances as well. Not as many as with Ventus, but still a bunch. This, to me and a bunch of other guys out there, is the quintessential classy spring scent. And so I think that it's another one that if you're going to dive into the Creed catalog is uh, one that should be on the short list of fragrances to sample. I mean, it's been out for like four decades, but it still works, still smells good. And this is the third one, the other one that I was like, yeah, absolutely got to include that one. It is Royal Oud. Yeah, I love Royal Oud. This one is also right up there toward my favorite, which is it was really probably these three or like uh, the three that I put at the top of your standard men's creed fragrances. Royal Oud, pretty pricey. I mean, they're all pricey, but this is not easy to find for cheap. So all the fragrances that I'm showing you here today are my 75 mil bottles that I had for uh, years and years. So this doesn't come in 75 anymore. I mean, none of these do. They come in 50 and 100. A 50 of this at retail is 405. A 100 is 57. So yeah, it's like I said, pretty expensive. Now the name Royal Oud, you may be thinking, oh, it's gonna be a big opulent Oud note, maybe a little funky, jammy, sweet, possibly barnyardy, fecal, whatever. It's none of that. Nah, Royal Oud is a, it's a woody fragrance, yes, but Oud is not really the focal point, even if it is the focal point of the name. It's woody, spicy, it is rich, very sophisticated. It has a little bit of a smokiness to it, but there is nothing here that is dirty. Instead, it's elegant. It's an amazing fragrance for fall and winter, also spring. Really good one for formal situations, more grown up <laughs> situations, if you want to call it that. Just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Royal Oud, some of the best stuff Creed has done. All right, now these last two, I really waffled on. I really did. Um, so the next one I'm going to show, and the one that I think people should smell, is Silver Mountain Water. But I want to put out there that uh, Silver Mountain Water is not my favorite Creed. No, it's not that I dislike the fragrance, because I don't at all, but there are other fragrances from Creed that are not in this list that I personally like more and would wear over this one. But I think if you're just talking Creed in the sense that people should really know, this one is one. So this is really well known for having an inkiness to it. Also, I miss these old atomizers. Come on, bring them back. The bottle's 10 years old at this point. Oof. But yeah, and inkiness, that's one of the things this is known for. I know that doesn't sound great, but it has tea, black currant, citrus, musk, as some of the other notes in the fragrance. It can be pretty strong, truth be told. Uh, this is one of those ones that I think has sleeper performance. Some people will say, oh, you know, the performance is not great of Silver Mountain Water, but uh, I've gotten some crazy beast mode performance from this stuff to the point that it's just too much. <laughs> and I've caused people to have like coughing fits when I have worn this. It's another scent that has a lot of clones out there and it has inspired some other niche companies to come out with fragrances similar to this one, like uh, Mephisto by Zerzhov. It's it's pretty similar to Silver Mountain Water. And then also uh, Hamptons by Bond Number no. 9 similar to this one. So another fragrance that has had a pretty big impact in the fragrance sphere and one that you should know about. The last one is this Melusine Imperial. Now, I also want to say Bois du Portugal. I like that a lot. If you like classically masculine fragrances, you should check that out. Arolfa, really good. It's another one that's very fresh and gentlemanly, and that would be a good one for spring, summer. And uh, Virgin Island Water, which is probably the best just summer scent, straight up summer scent that Creed has. But Millicene is one that I have really liked for a long time, so I couldn't leave this one out. 
Oof, yeah, these atomizers, so good. So this is really well known for having sort of a salted watermelon scent profile to it when you first spray it on. And I like it a lot. It has that ambergris, like Creed aspect to it that a lot of Creed's had. So if you smell a bunch of them, you'll get this similar ambergris note across them and you'll be like, oh, oh yeah, I get it now. It's one of those deals where you have to spray and smell a few of them and then you'll be like, oh yeah. And this has that. So a salty marine watermelon fruity vibe with that ambergris aspect, that's what you're gonna get here. And um, there are other cheap fragrances out there that smell similar to this. There are clone fragrances, uh, Sean John Unforgivable, a bit like this, Ed Hardy Love and Luck, kind of like this also. Really, when you look at the more popular Creed fragrances, there are always gonna be a lot of alternatives out there, but Millicene Imperial gonna wrap it up for me. So those five, those are the five. I think if you're starting with Creed, then these are the five you start with. There are a lot of other good ones that they have put out, uh, the ones I mentioned. Viking, I think, is very good as well. And then they have some more expensive ones like Spice and Wood, really nice, but uh, start here. Thanks guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. Let me know in the comments your favorite creed for men. I will see you tomorrow. See you guys. Thank you.